Hello and welcome to another video. We learnt that asynchronous sequential circuits can be built with delays or latches, but delays can cause problems as well. And when delays cause unwanted states in an asynchronous sequential circuit, they are referred to as hazards. First of all, let us examine hazards in combinational circuits. Hazards exist because different paths have different propagation delays. You need to understand that when an input of a gate changes, the output cannot change exactly at the same instant. It takes a very small amount of time for the signals to change as it percolates down the signal chain. So therefore, a gate input, there will be a very small amount of time before the output changes to reflect the input. So if we have an extra number of gates, as you can see there in our diagram, the X2 signal flows directly into the AND gate but it has to reach the other AND gate through the inverter. So the signal gets delayed in the inverter and the zero does not arrive at the same time as the one. Now this delay is going to cause an output glitch or spike or as shown there what we call a static one hazard where the one drops to zero and then comes back to one again during the short time that it takes for the gate to settle down. And uh, we get, get not only static one hazards, but we can get static zero hazards as well. Study this diagram carefully. Pause the video if necessary to see how when we're working with zeros, we can get a static zero hazard to occur. Now, why would it be called a static zero hazard when it's clearly going from zero to one? Well, zero is the static condition. So we have a static zero and the hazard is where it jumps to one. That's a spike or it could be called a glitch. And it's there in the output only because of the propagation delay in the inverter shown in this circuit. These hazards can cause a transition to an incorrect state. And this diagram here seeks to explain that carefully. Why the hazard can cause an incorrect stable state. Study the diagram carefully and observe How do we correct this from happening? Well, the hazard occurs when we move from one gate to the other. The transition from one gate to another is what causing the hazard. So if we insert the additional gate, add another gate there, we can maintain the output and guarantee that the hazard does not occur. There's another way to prevent hazards and that is to use latches. Here we've constructed a latch for the exact same transition table and we've constructed it both with the NOR gates and the AND gates and if you don't understand how this is done I have another video that shows you 
how to build circuits using latches. Please go and watch that and then come back. Now we examine how the latch prevents the hazard in the subsequent videos. Assuming that we keep X2 at a 1, we can get a hazard when we're going with X1 from a 1 to a 0 or from a 0 to a 1. And what I've tried to show here is the two different conditions. We're going to take one condition at a time. So here we're going from the 1 to the 0. So we've got three diagrams to indicate the condition. So first, x1 is shown with a 1. So the first diagram is stable with the x1 at a 1. The middle diagram shows when the x1 has gone to a 0, but because of the delay, the output of the inverter has not yet changed to a 1. Make sure you understand that. The middle diagram shows that the output of the inverter has not yet reached a 1 after the input of the X1 has gone to a 0. And finally, in the rightmost diagram, the only thing that changes there is that the output now has finally reached a 1. But we see that until it finally reaches the 1, the output Y does not become 0. In the middle diagram, the output Y is still a 1. But once the inverter finally becomes 1, then the output Y changes to a 0. So no hazard has taken place in this circuit at all. Finally, we look at the situation where x1 goes from a 0 to a 1. Once again, the diagram at the top left shows the stable state with the x1 as a 0. When the x1 changes to a 1, even though the inverter has not yet processed that 1 and changed its output to a 0, the output Y has gone from 0 to 1. When finally the inverter catches up, and uh, in the right diagram, the inverter now catches up and its output has gone to a 0 to reflect the change in the input, the gate does not switch. The output Y remains at a 1, and all that happens is that the lower gate of the latch, where we have the R reset, just changes, but it's unable to affect the output because of the 0 that's firmly held on the S input. So... The latching action is what prevents the hazards from causing a problem at the output. So we are keeping the talking short, under 10 minutes, but there's a lot in these diagrams. You need to study them, pause the video, and make sure that you understand what's happening with the ones and zeros at each step of the analysis. Thanks for watching the Stephen Mendes channel and we'll see you in the next video.